Welcome back, dear traders. Let's discuss the main use on American trading floors. The negative use of GDP data released yesterday weakened the US dollar and aroused hopes that the US Fed might soften its ultimate hawkish rhetoric. In this context, Wall Street indexes closed another session in the green. The benchmark stock indexes closed with the roughly equal gains. The Dow Jones rose 1%, the Nasdaq added 1.1% and the S&P 500 grew 1.2% to close at 4,072 points. All of them traded higher in the New York pre market. The S&P 500 is expected to trade between 4,020 points and 4,140 points today. The U.S. economic output shrank 0.9%, secondly in the second quarter, following a 1.6% fall in the first quarter. Contraction for two quarters straight means a technical recession. On the Thursday, Janet Yellen said that the U.S. economy had not slipped into recession yet. Citing her words, a true downturn means broad-based weakening of the economy. That's not what we are seeing right now, the Treasury Secretary noted. Though Fed's policymakers affirm that the strong labor market does not allow analysts to term the ongoing situation a recession, investors have a faint hope that the US Fed could soften its uh, hawkishness. Today, futures on the US stocks went sharply up in the light of upbeat corporate reports by Amazon and Apple. Apple shares jumped 2.4% to $161.30 a piece in the pre-market after the iPhone maker announced that the shortage of spare parts is being solved and the demand for iPhones remains steady despite the fact consumers cut other spending. Amazon shares spiked 10.23% to $134.75 a piece after the company predicted a surge in its revenue in the third quarter because of a higher commission for the subscription to the Prime Loyalty Program. At the same time, shares of other um, prosperous companies traded mixed during the pre-market. Today, investors are anticipating a series of corporate reports by ExxonMobil, Procter & Gamble, Chevron, AstraZeneca and the Colgate Palmolive. So far, the stock market has a fair chance to close the month on an optimistic note. The S&P 500 has gained almost 7% this month, though it remains 15% lower than in its January's high. All in Alba Street has made a good start to the second half of the year. The US dollar is on the defense. Uh, the dismal US GDP data escalated the decline in the yields of its US treasuries, which weakened the US dollar. Today, its index recovered to 106.50. The intraday carried off for today is between 106.20 and 107.10. The greenback has loosened its grip on a major currency despite the Fed's rate hike by 75 basis points. Nevertheless, the US dollar index remains not far away from its 20-year peak. Analysts say that a pause in the greenback rally reflects investors' worries about economic conditions in the United States. From now on, downbeat macroeconomic data will affect the US dollar stronger. After evidence of a technical recession in the United States, the Federal Reserve will make cautious decisions on the monetary tightening. It means that the regulator might not increase interest rates at such a fast pace. Today, the report on personal spending revealed that Americans are poised for robust spending. Consumer spending in the United States rose 1.1% in June from a month ago, higher than the forecast for a 0.9% increase. The indicator for May was upgraded to 0.3%. The report reveals growth in spending because high prices force consumers to pay more. 
The increase in the personal spending was mainly driven by rising prices of gasoline, new light trucks, accommodation and healthcare expenses. However, the actual PCE adjusted to inflation aged up 0.1% after a 0.3% drop in May. In a separate report, personal income grew 0.5% a month uh, to the same degree as in May, slightly higher than expected. The indicator has been rising for five months in a row amid an increase in the wages. The USD card pays a trading higher at levels above 1.2800. The currency pay is likely to trade in the Canada between 1.2770 and 1.2890 today. Despite the steady rally in the oil market, investors are focused on a several economic metrics, including Canada's GDP that might influence the Bank of Canada's plans on a further rate hikes. The Canadian economy locked a zero growth in May. The GDP reading remained at zero, though the market had suggested a 0.2% decline. Expansion was recorded in a 14 out of 20 industrial sectors. Contraction occurred in the construction and manufacturing sectors. According to Flash estimates, the Canadian economy expanded 1.1% in the second quarter subsequently. Analysts predict a 0.1% uptick on a month in June on the back of beyond growth in the construction, manufacturing and service sectors. On the flip side, the mining and the oil sectors contracted. As for the crypto market, 100 top tokens are easing the pace of the rally. Despite the revival of the risk on mood, the digital currencies are retreating from the highs on a Thursday. Bitcoin declined to $23,600 after yesterday's peak at uh, 24500 The second popular crypto, Ethereum, shed 4.5% and dropped to $1,700. The outlook seems obscure amid the lack of solid fundamentals. Bitcoin tried a few times to conquer the peak at 24200 and settle higher. But each time it uh, encountered profit taking and slipped afterwards. No matter what trends are unfolding in markets. See you on Monday on InstaForex TV channel.